Langham started well and within 12 minutes were on the scoreboard with a try from Keith Davidson, the ex-Edinburgh pro finding space on the left to open the Langham account. Neil Cubbon converted. Shortly after, Cubbon bagged a penalty before David Irvin raced away for his first try of the season to put the Milntown men firmly in control at 15-0. And Berwick's only answer was a penalty in front of the posts by the border's second top point scorer this season, Matthew Hackett. But the try of the game came on 28 minutes. Langham were running the ball from everywhere, combining on a number of occasions to find gaps in the Berwick defence. Fullback Colin Jardine here, cleaning up a loose ball with winger Jamie Little, setting things up for centre Neil Cubbon to burst through. Hand on to David Irvin, who gave the scoring pass to Alistair Cavers, who thoroughly enjoyed diving over the line. But Berwick didn't come all this way to roll over, and they tried to put some positive play together. But they found Langham to be a very difficult side to break down, generally well disciplined in defence and equal to anything that Berwick threw at them. When Matthew Hackett uncharacteristically missed an easy penalty in front of the posts, you got the feeling that this wasn't going to be Berwick's day. Berwick weren't short of possession and at times they put some good pieces of play together, including this run from veteran Ben McCreeth, who managed to punch a few holes in the Langham armour before being stopped in his tracks. But as halftime came, they were still well adrift. Langham targeted a bonus point and after a Matthew Hackett penalty for Berwick, they got it. Stephen Nicholl was in the right place at the right time to get his fifth try of the season, putting him in second place in the Borders try-scoring table. Still Langham pushed for more points, happy to try all kinds of tactics to break down the Berwick defence and this Neil Cubbon kick and catch typified the inventive play which the home team were employing all afternoon. Cubbon had scrum half David Irvin on his shoulder, but a try-saving tackle by Gareth Hill denied Irvin a second try. Both sides must be complimented for moving the ball on the heavy pitch and trying to create chances. This move from Berwick almost coming off, but it was Langham who handled the better of the two sides, and their support for each other was a key factor in them winning today's game. Although they couldn't score any more points, a bonus win was exactly what Langham needed to put them up to third in the table, with one eye on a promotion place as they start to put a winning run together. Final score at Milntown, Langham 29, Berwick 6. We're obviously playing pretty well. Uh, it's, a huge, it's been a huge team effort today. Um, and we scored some of the best tries that we've scored this season, so it's been pretty good. Now the third uh, try I thought was uh, particularly good because a lot of interpassing uh, going on there. Yeah, uh, we, we've practised on it in training, our, um, our, our support running, our, our running lines, support lines, and they paid off today because the third try was a good one, but I thought our second try was good as well. So, um, as I say, it's, it's, it's all about the training. We've, we've had a good squad up in the last couple of weeks, so we've been working hard to, to try and rectify these things. And of course, a winning team obviously gets people interested, youngsters coming into the club? That's exactly it. Um, just last week, we've had three, four boys come back that haven't played for a few years, just because the, the buzz around the clubs, it's coming back again. So, um, the, the word on the street is we're starting to win games. We look like we can go somewhere and we're getting a lot of boys back, which is good. We didn't expect to uh, to score four tries really against Berwick and Berwick have been going very well this season. Oh, we knew that on Thursday night, like Neil said, uh, we targeted this game because we knew they'd come down. Berwick renowned for big forward play, hitting it up and just knew it was going to be a really tough ga uh, game. So to get four tries is really, really good. Well, Stephen Gilchrist, obviously disappointment here. Yeah, very disappointed. You know, it's another away trip, another defeat sort of thing. Um, we've done everything right pre-season or like during the week you know the guys are pretty positive and we thought we could come up here and you know and really do do a number on Langham but in all fairness I thought Langham played well they did the basics well they defended well and they took their chances well and when we had our chances we just never seemed to seem to create anything. Well before the game uh, I seen you off the bus as well all the guys were, were buzzing and uh, really up for it but something just didn't spark on the pitch. No it's just something I, I think it's all down to, to the way Langham played you know they played to their strengths you know it was a big heavy pitch I mean, we knew it would be a big heavy pitch because it always is when you come to Langham and obviously with the rain and everything else throughout the week um, but 
we were we really concentrated hard this week on trying to do something and get that first away win because once you start getting the away wins, the home wins, once they start going, you know, it's it's pretty good. But we just lacked something today. I just don't know what it is, but the guys will just forget about that and we'll concentrate next week for for Preston Lodge coming down to Berwick. And that's a good opportunity obviously to get the show back on the road again oh it is it's always a great opportunity to get back on the road you know Lang and um, Preston Lodge who are bottom of the table our next three or four games are actually teams that are all below us in the league and um, so it's hopefully an opportunity for us to to get the morale not that the morale is difficult down at Berwick you know because you know the guys are buzzing they're wanting to play rugby and stuff and um, but it's just we just need to get that away first away win and I'm sure once we get the first the second one will be easy now you've played six of the teams in your group, including Langham. Now, how do you rate Langham next to the other teams you've played? I would probably put Langham up there as one of the better teams in the league, to be quite honest. You know, I know how a Fife are sort of running away with the league, but I don't think how a, how a Fife are that great of side, really. You know, I, th- I thought, you know, if Langham can play well and, you know, and, and keep the structure in the defence that they created here and... I think key to the Langham is keeping Keith Davidson fit because he's the playmaker. Everything seems to revolve around him. But um, so if they can keep him fit and keep um, everything on the front foot, then I can see Langham, you know, being up there, hopefully pushing for promotion. And I hope that we, the second team from the board, is up there pushing for promotion. So the heads are down, obviously, at the moment, but uh, from next week, as you say, you've got a real opportunity uh, playing teams below you in the league and a real chance to, to get back up that table. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the heads will be down for half an hour sort of thing, but we'll just have a chat, regroup, you know, long bus home, back to Berwick sort of thing. Yeah, I'll have a chat with some of the players and just say, you know, this is what we expect, um, this is what we want to do, and just, you know, remind them that, we, that our next four games are all against teams that are below us, so hopefully we can get start scoring tries again and you know start getting the back-to-back results and then start pushing up the league again. Scrum Magazine is the driving force behind Grassroots Rugby. With regular editions throughout the year you can stay in touch with club and schools rugby. For full details go to scrummagazine.com.